Oh, my name is Emily here with 3D Printing Canada and in today's video I'm going to show you how to turn images into 3D objects. And also I am warming this up right now. <laughs> So I was playing around with some color changing filament when I made this kalimba here and I thought another really cool application of color changing filament would be coasters because you often have hot drinks or cold drinks on coasters and that'd be a good, good way to show it off, show off the color changing. So that's what I did and I'm going to show you how I did that. So my idea today is making coasters out of vector images. And you can find vector images online. One place I like to look is this website, Pixabay. You can find a lot of images that are royalty free. And vectors are great because you can resize them to any shape. So today I searched for geometric on Pixabay. I looked for black and white and transparent because those translate best to becoming 3D models. And after scrolling through a few of these, I picked out a few I like that I would like to transform into coasters. So over to Tinkercad, I'm going to create a new design. Just gonna full screen myself. Okay, and I'm going to import my SVGs, my vector images, into Tinkercad and play with them from there. So I have a few, and by default they're huge, so uh, the regular size of a coaster is about 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters, so I'm going to change that to 100 millimeters width and import. Okay, it's loaded in. You can see it's all one connected shape. That looks good. Okay. And it seems to be all joined together in one piece. Such that I think I'm just going to shorten this down a little bit. Maybe more like four millimeters thick. And I'm going to put this in Cura and see how it prints. Export as an STL. Checkerboard coaster. Okay, I'm going to see what it looks like in Cura for slicing it. See what it looks like for slicing it to print. Okay, so we've got our little coaster into Cura here. Oh, it looks like some of those details are going to be pretty tiny, so I, I don't know if we'll be able to manage that. Uh, already you can kind of see the optical illusion that goes with it. I hope that effect will be apparent once it's printed out as well. Okay, let's see. I'm going to increase the quality to super quality just because there's some tiny details in here. Um, I'll discard my changes from last time and just go through it again. Three walls thick sounds good. Top and bottom I don't usually play with. 10% uh, infill is usually enough for me. 200. Um, I'm going to be printing this in black, so I want to turn the temperature up a bit more. Speed. I'll slow it down, just so it has most chance of succeeding. Travel's good. Cooling's good. Doesn't need any support. Or build plate adhesion, really, but we'll leave a skirt on there. Okay, let's see what this slice preview looks like. Four hours and 33 minutes. Well, let's have a preview. Let's 
zoom right in. Well, it does look like some of those details are too tiny to really pick up on. Hmm, let me see here. Ooh, this, this new Cura is tripping me up. You know, um, how does this go anymore? Okay, let's see. Okay. So the very center is too tiny to print. Um, so to get around that, all these little bits are too small for the nozzle to pick up on. I'm going to go back to Tinkercad. Going to zoom in on this shape here. And instead of leaving all these tiny details, I'm going to replace it with a little cylinder in the middle. Where's that cylinder? Okay, that's a little bigger than I was thinking. I just want it to be doo -doo -doo -doo, about as big as the part where you can't print. Okay, and I think that's still a pretty cool design. Kind of makes it look more like the sunshine. Okay, so I want it to be three millimeters just like everything else. And I'm going to group it all together just for fair measure. Okay. Yeah, that looks better. Now there's no more tiny details in the center. And this looks like it's 3D printable. Oh, I like the way that looks. Okay, so I'm going to export this. Actually, da, da, da. okay, we're good. I'm going to export this as an STL for 3D printing. And I'm just going to save over the last one because the last one isn't really printable anyways, but this one is. Okay, on to my second coaster. So I upload the SVG to Tinkercad, same as the first one. And I also want this to be about 10 centimeters across, so I'm going to enter in a thousand millimeters. I was using my drawing tablet when I made this, so sorry for the slow input. I'm sorry, a hundred centimeters, a hundred millimeters is 10 centimeters, of course. So there's the shape as it up, as it uploads into Tinkercad by default. And you can see it already is pretty well formed, like it's generally circular shape, so I think that'll make a pretty good coaster. Um, if I were to print it as it is right now, it would come off in a bunch of different little pieces. So my goal is to connect it all together with it while retaining some of that detail. So first I'm going to adjust the thickness or the height of the coaster and three millimeters is a good coaster height in my opinion. So I will enter three millimeters for the height. And I've got that in place there. And I'm just checking the size of this generally circular shape because I'm going to add a cylinder and resize it to the same dimensions. So checking those dimensions again. I will insert my new dimensions here. First the width then the length. Next is 95.03. So I select just the shape I want to resize. And I click on the dimension I want to change. And then you can either type it in, or if you have a drawing tablet like me, you can draw it in, you know, just whatever you prefer. Okay, so now we have two shapes about the same size. One last change I'm going to make to this cylinder is you can change the number of sides it has and the more sides the smoother it'll be so I tend to like to turn up the sides when I'm 
doing circular shapes in Tinkercad. It's a little more complicated to 3D print that way, but our machines are capable. So just changing the color for illustrative effect, and I'm also going to change the height or the thickness of this shape to 1.2 millimeters so that the original shape will extrude above, kind of embossed. I'm not sure if that's the right word. Okay, so I have these two shapes here. I'm going to, just for illustrative effect, color my top layer as well. And now here's the part where I can select all the shapes and align them to be perfectly lined up. So that was by clicking the align button and then I chose the axis on which I wanted to center the shapes and here we have it. I have my next 3D object that I think will make a pretty cool coaster. There's kind of an optical illusion effect with the white and the black, and I'm not sure it'll show up so much in 3D form, but I thought it would be cool to try. So yeah, here's the 3D object of the coaster I will soon 3D print. So I export it as an STL. As STL is good for slicing and printing, and I save it. And here's, here's what it looks like when it's all printed and done. Now, this coaster I ended up printing in resin because, uh, well, I tried in plastic at first, but I found that the details in the starting image were just too fine at some points that resin ended up being the best option for it to get all those tiny details in there. And for this one, I actually did a color change. I started printing it in white, but after five layers, I changed it to the color changing filament that goes from green to orange. Yeah, that kind of gives a multicolored effect out of one nozzle. So here's what that coaster looks like after it's had some temperature on it. You can really see where my hand was pressing. Uh, one interesting thing I've learned about this color changing thermoplastic filament from personal experience is that if you leave it in the sun day after day after day, it'll actually permanently change into the heated up color. So with this green stuff, when it's most hot, it turns yellow. So I have a little figure that was green in the, green in the beginning, but is now yellow. <laughs> so my final thoughts on this project were some images work better than others for transforming them into 3D objects, but generally there's a lot you can do when you have resin or plastic printers on your side. Oh, this has been Emily with 3D Printing Canada. If there's anything you'd like to see me design and 3D print, please let us know in the comments and be sure to like the video and subscribe for more.